Mr. Fire. Listen, you're going to eat some lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have my, my protein shake here and my healthy turkey sandwich here. But I decided, you know what? Let's have a conversation. We'll get to the lunch when we're done. Okay. <laughs> yes. What's going on there, my brother? Yeah, man. Well, you know a whole lot, man. You know, we won't, we won't, we won't, we won't keep everybody too long. We'll talk about the important stuff and then uh, take a couple questions and get get. You know, let the people flow with us. Yeah, keep it moving for real. So, as you guys know, mm-hmm. on our weekly talks here with uh, Wall Street Fire, we always take questions from the audience. So you guys just put in your questions, and as we go through, we'll be taking them. So, anything you guys wanna ask him, ask me, or just discuss, put the questions in the comments, and we'll take it there. So we say the sun is shining where you at right now, Mr. Fire. Yeah, weather is sweet. But uh, you know, everything uh in the world is it's been a it's been a a very introverted, extroverted just wild couple of days, man. It's been a wild yeah. couple of days. And it's when you look at it now weekly, because remember last week when we connected, I think it was last week Monday, we're laughing and we're talking mm-hmm. about the verses quarantine, mm-hmm. um, passing and Bobby mm-hmm. and all of these type of stuff here. And then only like mm-hmm. six days later, it's almost like all hell broke loose. It's been like that all, almost all 2020. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at Corona, you say to yourself, man, I was just about to get on a flight to go to this place. Yeah. I was just about to go travel to go here. I was just about to go see my family over there. Mm-hmm. And like in a Thanos snap, nothing was mm-hmm. the same again. Bro. You know, nothing was the same again, man. So um, can you just imagine if this is the new norm where every every couple of days, every couple of months, yeah. a final snap, something that no one thought could, yo, nobody saw it coming. Nah. Another thing happens, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then another thing happens and another thing happens. So what it's I will right. say to everybody out there as we get this conversation started is, man, we are with you. We feel, understand your pain. Mm-hmm. Um, they're having something here in Jamaica um, so I might go out there okay. but you know everyone out there please be very sure that you understand um, what it is that your local uh, government and uh, your local country um, is has uh, set up to participate okay. in whatever is happening so there's a lot of places to donate a lot of places to uh to you know to organize and protest a lot of that kind of stuff happening so be very in tune with what's happening and um you know this is a good time to really think about survival and how it is that you can survive um you know i think one of the biggest plights Mm -hmm. for us is we don't own land which means we cannot grow our own food and we've had two instances now back to back that have showed us how important it is to be able to grow our own food and to survive yeah. independent of getting in a car that takes gas to go to a supermarket that takes cash, you know? Because, um, you know, super easily gas could be something that nobody can use. Cash could be something that nobody can use. And then the people with these will be the people uh, running the show. So, you know, everybody out there really and truly, man, look, look at yourself and just think to yourself, especially everybody in the cities, everybody in Toronto, everybody in New York City. You know, if you guys are living in these cities and uh, you can't grow your own food, man, I would really begin to think about working remotely and taking it to a warmer climate, taking it to a place where you can grow your own food. Because at the end of the day, this is the only thing that matters and water. So, you know, when you can really look at yourself and say, yo, I'm, if they cut me off from food and water, I'm, I'm fucked. 100 if somebody, if somebody burns down, um, you know, every supermarket, I'm fucked. Mm-hmm. Just, let me just start with that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, what were you saying? Yeah, no, it's like, you have to be self-sufficient. We need to do, we need to organize and stuff. But our number one, number one thing that's killing us right now before mm-hmm. anything is trust mm-hmm. nobody mm-hmm. trusts anybody and we live in a society that's promoting 
trust no one also. So it's not helping. Because mm-hmm. if we, in order to form an organization, you have to have trust before you could have mm-hmm. paperwork where it's now in trust. And that's right. So really problem. quick, stick a pin, stick a pin for everybody out there that does, doesn't understand the word trust. Mm-hmm. Trust is not the word that I think you guys think it is, or it's not the way that I think you guys think he's thinking that he's saying it. Okay. Trust is a trust is a legal term. Okay. Trust is a contract. It's a contractual term. Trust is a legal term that we use commonly. But it wasn't intended for us to use that word commonly. Trust is a legal term. Okay. And you need to have a tr- you need to have business in mind. And that's why I know I don't trust people. I honestly do not trust people. Yeah. You know? But I also understand that when I get into business with people mm-hmm. in that contract and in that fundraising, we build a trust. And therefore, we can use trust in business sense. But do I trust you in this world? I don't. I don't okay, trust so then, none. Of, I don't trust none of y'all. So then, what is it? Why, when you say you don't trust, is it to a level there's nothing? And why do you think that way? Because I've seen the worst of humans. I think yeah. we've all seen the worst in humans. Mm-hmm. I think we've had things that have happened to us. Mm-hmm. But I'm also really good at learning from other people's lessons. For sure. I've watched other people put their trust in other people. Mm-hmm. And lose everything. Yeah. So I do not trust people. Yeah. I trust my immediate friends. Okay. I trust my immediate family. Mm-hmm. I trust my immediate circle. Yeah. You will have to go through a vetting process mm-hmm. to get into my immediate circle. For sure. It is not going to be something you just can't roll up and say, yo, mm-hmm. I don't trust you. And it's going to be a long time before I trust you. I do not trust people. I only trust my family and my immediate circle of friends. That's it. And I guess that's where we differ. But again, differ is good. You see me, I basically trust everybody until they give me a reason not to trust them. And the reason why I think that way is like this. I want to be trusted. So in order for me to be trusted, I have to trust people also. And Mm -hmm. that's basically how I see things. But again, that works for me. And what works for you works for you. You understand? Yeah, and I, res- and I respect you. I mm-hmm. respect you. You do it the way you feel like it works for you. Mm-hmm. I totally respect it. And to anybody out there, yeah. don't, be a f- don't, don't look at my advice as the only way. For sure. I'm doing what, or I'm even doing what my works. advice as the only way. I'm doing what works for me. Yes, yes. So everybody out there, do whatever works for you. Do whatever mm-hmm. works for you. And I, and I understand that. It's just what... Okay, so then if the, let's go with the scenario where you say the word is in trust. How do we put together organizations before legally do? What is it that we have to have amongst each other? Is it respect? Is that the word? Well, respect should always be there. Yeah, man. But what we should have is a, a, like for instance, if I want to do business with muscle. Yeah. I would probably write a business plan. For sure. Um, At very least, I would write a deck. Mm -hmm. Right? I'd put together a deck and be like, yo, here's the, Here's what I'd like to do. Here's the goals we'd like to hit. And here's how I'd like to go about getting it done. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to put anything on real paper. Everybody, um, and there's nothing wrong with having town hall meetings. There's nothing wrong with having things like that. But there has to be some contractual business For sure. to build the truck. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there's several words. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Maybe Job Prince can tell me some of the other words. But a lot of the words that we use in, in common speak are, are, are legal terms that, you know, yeah. just spilled over into, but they're not meant for that. Trust is not meant, we're not meant to trust in the way that we see somebody and they pull up and you go, yo, I'm going to give you all my money because I trust you. It's not yeah. meant to be like that. You're supposed yeah. to put a contract together and then I trust you. Yeah, no, for um, sure. There's a it's few, just, there's a few other gonna, words I can't remember. You're not going to trust any random, it's... Just like when I when I say I trust basically every, but it's like we're we're not dumb out here. We get it, you know. What I mean, trust you to a level to I trust you to do what you're gonna do because you're a human being. You understand? Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. really what it comes down to. But you see the trick with it, even now, right now, with where people are saying, okay, the establishment is racist. The systems are systematically racist. Okay, cool. You can't fight a system. 
just going out there randomly and doing mad things. It just doesn't work that way. You might get a one lucky bligh, but it doesn't work mm -hmm. that way. If now, yeah, and, but, it's, but it's difficult. Hmm? But it's difficult, right? It's difficult to to um, it's difficult to look at the moment, yeah, and the emotion, mm -hmm. and not understand because we yeah. understand, we understand. But go ahead, what were you saying? But that's why you always have leaders at the top that sends a message down. But it's like this: if there's protesters out there. We always know whenever protesters and the police know they're going to come with riot gear. What if the protesters came with riot gear? What then? You understand? But that well, would that take would take, organization. That would take, that would take a trust. Yeah. That somebody that would, would have to buy that. organization to make that happen. And once they see you show up now, okay, somebody, you're in riot Somebody gear. would have to buy that. Somebody would yeah. have to purchase the riot gear. That mm -hmm. takes trust. Mm -hmm. That is a business. So you and I are in a business. Before we even go outside... You and I are in a business and we've raised the funds and put the funds in a trust. That mm -hmm. fund, that funding that we've put in the trust now goes towards riot gear. Mm -hmm. That's what people need is they need an actual um, contract with each other. So when you're looking to the person left and right to you, like just look at everybody like a business, you know, and, and, and approach everybody and every conversation should be like a business and everybody should have it in their mind. Like, yo, I need to put that structure in the initial steps because yeah. once it gets to a level it's very difficult to then scramble back and get the structure that you're saying and we 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 as a race have mm -hmm. been we don't talk to each other mm -hmm. we barely talk to each other yeah. if you're muslim mm -hmm. and i'm well let me not say i'm christian because y'all know i do not fuck with any religion if you're yeah. muslim and that person <laughs> is christian they don't talk yeah. If that person is Baptist and that person is Seventh-day Adventist, they don't talk. Yeah. It's like, and it keeps trickling down and trickling down, trickling down, and we're fragmented and fragmented. And we're fragmented based on confusion. Mm -hmm. We've taken up two religions that are not ours. Mm -hmm. We've decided to divide, fight amongst ourselves, putting the religion over my own brother and sister. Mm -hmm. You know, putting... Um, my gang over my brothers and sister. You know, me and Bambino were talking yesterday about where the gang's at. You know, it's really crazy when you think about like how much things people put over their own brother and sister. People will put their own put a sports team over their own brother and sister. And end up and end up a box though, not man, because in this them favorite sports team. And it's just like, yo, we've lost it. So in a way, man, if we want to look at whatever positivity we can out of the situation the awareness and the networking and the conversations that we're having is, is it, to me is that positivity. We've been speaking a lot more about yeah. a lot of things that matter. Yeah, I agree. And right now, if you notice, if you're watching TV or watching Twitter or wherever you are, if you notice the mm. political correctness is out the window now, you know, it's no longer oh, the African American, no man, they're saying black people, race of, they're just calling it Yo, as it is. I saw, I saw, I saw, um, was it NFL? Mm -hmm. Somebody made a post and it was like, black people, we stand next to you. I was like, yo, that's crazy how mm -hmm. just a month ago, they would have never said that. Mm -hmm. They would have never said black people. They would have said African-American. They would have kept it politically correct. Right mm -hmm. now, and I'm not mad at it. I don't. I don't need any political correctness right now. Call it what say, it is, bro. Say it was it is. Yeah, say it as it is, man. No, because it's it's crazy, and especially they figured okay, probably one night of protesting in the states, but right now we're going into day eight and day nine right now, where they even had to bring back the curfew in New York, LA, and all. And people aren't even respecting that. It's like, buddy. You and your curfew and your corona could go one side. This is what we're mm -hmm. on tonight, right now. Yeah, I saw something that said Corona numbers jumped back up, and I was like, "Guys, I don't know, man. I don't know, guys. Like, something's not right. Something's not right, man." And, I, and I'm not a big, and I'm I, I'm not a big conspiracy theorist. I'm probably like an average conspiracy theorist. <laughs> yeah. Um, but something ain't right, man. Something ain't right. When you see white kids, when you see white kids, um, knocking down windows and white kids writing BLM on the wall and they're dressed all funny and you're just like, yo, why do you went all black looking all funny like that? Mm -hmm. You start to really wonder like, yo, what is going on? 
Yeah. You know, like, yo, I'm talking about, I saw video after video after video of white people with full, like, sh not showing their hair because they don't want yeah. people to know that they have that kind of hair. Like, just like ninjas, right? And BLM just everywhere and smashing everything. you just like, yo, something ain't right, man. Yeah. And also you start to really um, begin to understand that we're just getting the lowest level of information. That information pyramid goes way up. Yeah. Way, way, way up. It's wild. You know? It's unnecessary. Well, I got a question here for you. It says, mm -hmm. um, do you think the protesting is going to make a difference? Yes. Why you say that? Yes. Um, because I'm hopeful. Because I don't want anything to be wasted. Um, I'm not a negative person. I never, I'll never be a negative person. Um, going out and protesting um, is what you're supposed to do. Rioting, different subject. But protesting, it is what you're supposed to do. You are supposed to get up in numbers, get in somebody's face, and say, we've had enough. It is what you're supposed to do. Um, it is a level of, organize, of organization, and I appreciate organization. I appreciate when, when people can come together and say, yo, we did this together. We stood up and we let you know how many of us, you know, da-da-da. Um, so I always think protesting is a great thing to do. I always think that anytime something doesn't bother a community, um, a block of people, yeah, man, protest. Yeah. So then what's next after protesting? So, okay, protesting, so we got your attention. So then what's mm -hmm. the next step? Is it just a one plan? Okay, protest and go home? Or is it, what's the plans after protesting? Yeah, well, I don't know what the plan is exactly because I don't know who the leaders are right now. And I don't know who the people that everybody's looking to right now um, really have a plan and a structure. Mm -hmm. We tend to look at um, celebrities yep. for leadership and forget that celebrities are just celebrities. They're just, you know, P. Diddy is still pushing Ciroc. Like, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not like he's been planning for this for six months, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we got to kind of look at the people who are strategists, but I don't see them. You know, I don't know who the strategists I are. I don't see where the, okay, cool, whoever organized the protests and all of this nationwide, that's cool, but who, where are the figureheads? Who is the leader? Who is the person that you turn to and say, okay, what's the next move now? Or the group mm -hmm. of people? It seems like it's just uh, everybody splintered and doing their own thing for one common cause, but there's no plan after we get their attention. Mm. Well, I'll say this much. Pressure bus pipe. For sure. We've never been organized as a community. Mm -hmm. Let me not say that. Since the Black Panthers. Okay. The Black Panthers showed true organization, regardless of whatever happened. The Nation of Islam shows true organization. Mm -hmm. Those are two groups that I know we can look at. Mm -hmm. I can look at Farrakhan. I can look at Riza Islam. I could look at Leo Muhammad. I can look at um, all of the leaders in the Nation of Islam, and I can know that those guys have a plan. Mm -hmm. And I would love to be a non-Muslim and get that plan. But I appreciate, I appreciate that they don't give everybody that plan mm -hmm. because they don't trust you. Mm -hmm. They've let you down too many times. Yeah. So they're not going to let you walk into the mosque and hear the plan. Mm -hmm. I believe that the nation of Islam is going to be all right. Yeah. I believe that the nation of Islam has a plan. Yeah. But I understand that I'm not one of them and therefore I totally understand and respect why I'm not in that plan. So there has to be the people who are strategizing that give us a direction and give us a, 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 a plan because nothing's wrong with protesting. We should definitely keep protesting because, like I said, the pressure keeps on them. Eventually, people get sick. Like, imagine, imagine you, you, don't have, you, you, you don't want anything to do with who um, has anything to do with anything. You don't, you're not for this whole protesting, you don't want nothing to do with Black Lives Matter, but every single day, people get on the highway and stop you from going to work. 
mm-hmm. and they do it for weeks. They do it for months. Let me tell you something, man. Eventually, you're going to be like, yo, what do they want? Yeah. What do they want? You know, big up to Tev, the original bars. She said, everyone needs to read The Spook Who Sat by the Door. Great book. I haven't read it. Oof. I'll reread it. But Tev's a re- really intelligent. She's actually a big inspiration to me. Um, and uh, you guys definitely, if Tev says get that, get that book for, for this, these next couple of days as a as a um, some kind of plan or structure to what should have, be happening next, go get that book. Yeah, because I think that's the real the real issue is the real planning. And again, it's like this: if say the nation of Islam, they have a plan. That's for them. That's mm-hmm. cool. So then now a section has a plan. What about the other seventy five percent of people that don't have a plan? That's just oh here by the wind. What happens then? And that's where it comes back to the same thing where I'm saying our, I think our first problem is, again, we haven't found a word to replace it, so I'm going to go with this word. Trust. Yeah, if man, we trust, trust man. each other, we could build an organization and then we go into legal terms. But to get to legal, first we got to like and trust each other. And we don't trust each other. And that's what's yeah, And we don't like each other. I don't like you. I don't like them. I don't like nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like you. I like, I like, no, I, like, I, like I like you guys. <laughs> I like most people, yeah. But what I'm saying yeah. is, yeah. Um, and that's why you got to look at the NOI for guidance. Like, yo, I might not be in, in the NOI, but I should be looking at them as a model of structure. Yeah. You know, if... If I want to be in a group for change, well, let's say I want to be in a, a leader for group for change. Yo, the NOI is a great group to look at, man. Mm-hmm. You know, the New Wabian Nation, another great group to look at. The Hebrew Israelites, another great group to look at. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, those guys are structured. Mm-hmm. You know, the fruit of Islam, they're structured. They're structured. Mm-hmm. And they will go out there and they have their guns, and they will kill somebody for their community. Mm-hmm. How many of us are going to, yo, how many, how, literally, how many of us are willing to do that? You, know, you see you the know? trick with it. Once you, you become invincible, once you, the thing that holds down everybody, mm. everybody is afraid to die. You see, once you give that up, say, listen, I'm dying for this cause, you become mm. invincible. There is no threat. Mm. You can't threaten me again once I make up in my mind. I'm ready to die for what I believe in. That's mm-hmm. when it becomes a real problem. Yeah. And but most people aren't like that. No, see later. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, again, you know, we got a lot of, yo, let me, let me say something positive, man. Let me say something okay. real positive. Okay. Yo, to everybody out there who's going through this right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is Walsh Fire talking to you directly, directly, mm-hmm. directly, directly. Mm-hmm. Understand that this is the first time mm-hmm. we have seen so many of us give a fuck in like one subject. You're right. In like in like sixty years mm-hmm. since civil rights. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. After that came the crack era. Mm-hmm. Crack era just dis- yo it disseminated our community. In the yo, since the, in the last sixty years, this is the first time the majority of us have said this is a fucking problem and it's got to stop. Yeah. Give yourselves at least that much of a round of like, give yourself a little bit of credit. Yeah, let's give ourselves a little bit of credit and at least acknowledge that. Now, now that we can look around and say, okay, we got all of us trying to figure this out. Now we can say, you know what? Every day. We're going to learn. We're going to make lots of mistakes. We're going to make tons of mistakes because we never tried to do this before. Mm -hmm. We never assessed our situation and said, we need to fix this together. We have not, we not since the sixties have we done that. We are now in a place where we are saying, yo, we got to get our shit together. We're going to make mistakes. Everybody that's online, so quick to condemn, so quick to point a finger, so quick to say, you guys are doing it wrong. Shut the fuck up. Get up. Put your best foot forward. Yo, shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Because we know mistakes are going to be made. Mm-hmm. 
but we know our intention is good. So, like, I see a lot of people that are, like, totally against um, putting the, the Blackout Tuesday thing on their page. And to me, man, I got to start really, like, having personal conversations with some of them. Yeah. Because I respect your opinion. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, yo, there's got to be a time when you go, okay, all these black people are doing something. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit up as many of them personally and be like, yo, this isn't the way to do it. I figured it out. Instead, you see them make a post that's basically like saying, insinuating like, you guys are dumb. Yeah. You guys are stupid. I'm not putting up no black uh, post because that's not going to help change anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We get it. You're smarter than all of us. You're the smart one. So you, mm -hmm. since you're the smart one, we now appoint you as our leader. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You're probably going to make another post on Instagram. <laughs> you know, and it just gets annoying after a while. You start looking at people real, real sideways like, Breda, yeah. come on, man. You know, like this is our chance to, 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 to keep our conversations internal. Yeah. Keep it in our group chats and yeah. be like, yo, you know, I don't know if this Blackout Tuesday was a smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if people even have friends. Yeah. Like, do you, do you, do you have friends? Because you're on the ground dissing everybody that did something. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, yo, everybody just needs to do what they think is best. Do what you think is best. And I can say that almost all of us would agree mm -hmm. if what you think is best is dissing what everybody else has done, mm -hmm. you might be an enemy to progress. <laughs> if that's no the point. best you can do, yeah. you're not giving no information. You're not saying, yo, this is where everybody should go vote. This is where everybody should go do. Mm -hmm. You might be an enemy to progress. Yeah, but it's and just shout out like... to all my... Shout, hold on, man. Hold on, yeah. man. And shout out to all my white Asian what? friends. What? Shout out to them. Let me tell you why I say shout out to them. so glad I'm not gonna lie you guys know I only have one white friend so. <laughs> shout out to him I think we spoke about this already I, I, I don't live in a white world at all I didn't know white people until I worked at IBM I have one white friend yeah right shout out to him but out to all the white associates mm -hmm. I'm so glad you guys have showed me how you feel about me mm -hmm. Some of you love me. My bad. Yeah, some of you love me. No problem. Some of y'all just do not fuck with me. And I'm so glad that these last couple of days, I got just a, a, a gist, a little twinkle of how you feel. So big up to the black people that have been against any movement and have just been online just dissing everything that everybody does. Shout out to you. Because now we know when it's time to stand up and do something, you're probably going to be the one we cannot count on. You're going to be the one standing up and talking about how we're, gonna, how we're doing it wrong. Yeah. And shout out to my white friends who was like, yo, let me let everybody know that I fuck with these black people and their music and their culture and their food. And shout out to the ones that was like, you know, I fuck with their music and their culture and their food, but I don't fuck with their lives. I don't care about them being alive. It doesn't matter to me, you know? And yo, I want to fire upon this little Edap boy. What name again? He's a Jamaican guy that's running for office in Los Angeles. Yo, it's a, yo, it's a big, yo, it's one of the worst examples for a man I ever seen. Okay. I never see a man run back a white people like this man. Run back a. Anyways, yeah, man, what are we talking about? What talking about like white white culture and every other culture, I cannot lie. This is probably the first mm -hmm. time ever I've seen with my own eyes so many different races come together talking about one thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and it's not affecting mm -hmm. them per se. They see it's affecting somebody else. I've never seen this before. I see a lot yeah. of white people showing up. I cannot lie. You know what I mean? Yo, shout out to everybody. That was a lie when Rodney King mm -hmm. yep. went through getting beat up by the cops and the cops mm -hmm. got acquitted. Mm -hmm. 
How many of y'all were in a riot? Mm -hmm. Put your hands in the air. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How many people in the chat were in a riot? Mm -hmm. Were a part of the Rodney King riot? You were there yeah. and you were doing something insanely destructive. How many of y'all? Yeah. Okay. I see you. I see you. You see that mango hit that sun? <laughs> Listen. I know what it is. Yeah. I was there at the Million Man March. Mm -hmm. I know what it is. I've seen the worst and I've seen the best. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who want to condemn people and talk crap about people and act like they were never 20 years old themselves. Don't worry, man. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that you have spoken. I'm glad we know who's, who's, uh, what they call it? Monday, Monday quarterbacking. What they call it? Um, something there. When you just talk about what happened over the weekend. The armchair, yeah, like, armchair quarterback? Armchair quarterback. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate you. Yeah. Let me ask you. Have you ever had an interaction with the police? Hmm. <laughs> I'm light-skinned, but I'm black. Okay. All right. So then let's say, yes, it has. You have. Have you had a negative interaction with the police? Come on, bro. No, no, no. Have no, I no. had a pos Have I have a positive one? Whew. Okay. Give me, a day or two. Consider... Give me a day or two to think about if I've had a positive interaction with the police. Positive and negative. I mean, as in not as in you might have been pulled over in a car. Okay. You mm -hmm. and a couple of people in the car. They might have roughed up everybody or they might have left you alone. That's the only thing that I mean by negative and positive because clearly if you never left alone. Crime, never mm -hmm. left alone. Moment yeah. I get pulled over, moment we get pulled over, moment me and one black person in the car, three black people in the car, four black people in the car, me and one female in the car. Yeah. Me with my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Yo, I've had yo, I remember the I remember um I remember in high school, yeah. we were driving down 183rd Street in Miami. I was going back to where I'm from, which is Carroll City, but I went to a high school that's a little bit east. It's called North Miami Beach. North Miami Beach is in a Jewish neighborhood. It's a Jewish-Haitian neighborhood. Okay. But it's kind of like Crown Heights, where it's like Jews and Caribbean people live together, but it's crazy Jews. One side and the other side. All right. Now, remember now, I go to high school there. I have to drive back to my black neighborhood, to my all Jamaican neighborhood in Carroll City. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, brother. Yeah. You see the 10 minute drive mm -hmm. to get from my school back into the black neighborhood is the most fearful 10 minutes I've ever had to live every day of my life. Okay. Every single day. You're hitting that. You're hitting that full break when you get to the stop sign. You're yeah. making sure both your brake lights work. You make sure you're using your signal. Fuck it. I'll even put my hand out. Yeah. I'm making <laughs> sure that I'm never doing anything over the speed limit, mm -hmm. and still getting pulled over. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time was me, Baga people, Menaga calling him. On, mm -hmm. I just remember. Them pulling, them pulling us over, and then another car, because they, you know, three cars come quickly. And then immediately, it was, get out the car, get on the ground, get out the car, get out the ground. And I just remember a gun being two inches from my face. Wow. Get thrown on the ground, handcuffed, put on the curve. If you guys know anything about Miami, like 98 degrees, you know what I'm saying? Put on the curb. Sat there for an hour. They then walked over, unhandcuffed us, got into their car, drove off like nothing happened. No explanation. Like nothing. Nothing. We just we're in a Jewish neighborhood, and the Jewish and the Jewish community have the police on lock. They have police. They have police men that are theirs. They pay. They they pay the police commissioner. Commissioner. That, so they make, you know, they, they put, they pay and they have elected officials in, the, in that community. Yeah. So aren't we supposed to follow suit and do the exact same thing? 
We should have we should have been, but we're gonna do it now. Hopefully, that's like what matters. We're gonna do it now. Yeah. We're gonna do and it now. We're we're learning every day. So everybody with your negative chat and everything you want to say bad about black people in this time of trying to figure this shit out and structure and understand, yo, just unfollow me right now. Unfollow the, anybody that's doing anything. Just go isolate yourself because this is not the time to go shit on anybody that's doing something. This is a time to stay within your group chat if you don't like something, organize something, and get everybody the information of what you think we should do. Yeah. Don't just sit there and shit on people and, and talk about what they're doing is wrong. And put out some information on what they should be doing that you think is right. Yeah. And I agree. I agree 100%. Now is not time for talking. Now is time for action. Even if it... It's not the 100% right thing. Just do something and we'll figure it out as we go. Learn mm -hmm. as you go. Just mm -hmm. go. Yeah. That's the only way we can learn. The only way we can do it. But we can't just stay still. We've stayed still too long. So everybody got to get up and do something. And trust me, we're going to make tons of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Just go. But we're, going, but we're going. Just go. You know what I mean? No, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's been serious. And I hope, hopefully, next week, again, when we get into another conversation, it's not just... Uh, the situation now got worse. Hopefully, we'll have something better to bring to the situation now because it's still a developing mm -hmm. situation. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's it's wild. And the reason why I even ask you about police is, I'll tell you the truth now. Me, personally, I've never had a upfront terrible interaction with the police. And it's not because you weren't in situations where it could have gone left very quickly. It's mm -hmm. the the game. You know, we all know it's a game. You understand? When they, I don't know how it is in America versus to Canada. When they pull you over or if you stop and you're in the area, the first thing they're going to do is, who are you? If you're acting like you're tough back, you're going to just get tougher and you can't win that tough game. Yeah, it doesn't you're work like that in America. All they want is for you to say, that's okay, not in sir. America. Huh? That's not in America. That I understand, you know what I mean? In Canada now, in certain places, from you give them the yes, sir, no, sir, you don't have to mean that at all. Just give it to them and mm -hmm. go about your business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, America doesn't work like that at all, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, police, and let me not say all, mm -hmm. but damn it, so many, yeah. don't actually know the law. Yeah. They don't know the law. The they make it up as they citizens go. don't. They make it up as they go. The citizens don't know the law, mm -hmm. so they don't. Know, they don't know what they can and can't do. Yeah. This confusion is like a stick of dynamite, bro. Yeah. You have the police officers clueless as to what to do. They just. They're just yo. They did their six weeks training, and now they're an officer. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a college degree. You don't have to have, yo. Your six weeks training. You're an officer with benefits. You know, and if you decided in those six weeks, you're not going to learn nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no ongoing education, you know. Mm -hmm. So you end up having a bunch of people who, in all actuality, fumble and fumble and fumble and fumble That's because true. they're treating each situation as a learning experience because they don't know what they should be doing. They do not know, yeah. you know, so that, that's a smart one. we I need to learn. Education. We need to learn our rights as well. Yeah, you're, you're right. Learning your rights and the ongoing education as a police, because if you're into IT and you work for a company, you got to get upgraded every couple of months. You get upgraded because new stuff are happening. Once you're dealing with right. human beings, you need to be upgraded all the time. Okay, you're mm -hmm. sure? You know you're sure? You're, because you're dealing with the general public, boss. And when you're dealing with people, yep. you encounter 100 people and you're going to encounter 100 different situations. You understand? So they need to... That's a smart one. I never, I never thought about that before. Ongoing training. Yeah, man. Police don't. They just don't understand the law. They don't understand. You know how much time anybody here could tell you. You know how much time. Even the police that are here. You know how much time they could tell you. A police officer's looking at you, and you're telling him the law, yeah. and he's looking at you and going, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. and because we have phones or we can Google the law right now, you you look at them and you're like, yo, this is the law, bro. Yeah. And they're just like, mm, well, you know what? Get out of here then. Mm -hmm. so you know it's just about you know, making sure that you guys understand what it is you can and can't do and don't be afraid to tell the police officer what they can and can't do and learn the law truly learn it man learn it learn it learn it learn it 
There's nothing more fearful than an educated black man. You understand. You understand. You nothing more fearful. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a shame that we see nothing but women on the front lines of this protest and all that mm -hmm. stuff, man. It's crazy. When you look at the protest, you see beer, beer queens out there. I, I, I deal with it, yeah. you know. So it's just one of those things, man, like, yo, get educated on the law because there's nothing more fearful, nothing more fearful, nothing more scary than an educated black man. Yeah. You have to fight fire with fire and understand. In order for me to break the system, I have to understand the system. And once I understand right. it, then I know how to reverse it to get what I need out of it or to break it all together. But if right. I'm just going willy-nilly and I don't know it, then that's a problem right there. You'll always have stuff over me if I don't understand how it works. Right. And, and I would love I would love for somebody to put out like a short list mm -hmm. of what your rights are. Yeah. Even though it's not short because it's a whole constitution. Yeah. But you know, something that lets everybody know it should be like a song. Like somebody make a rap song. Make a rap song of the constitution so we can sing it and learn it. Because that's the best way to learn, right? You sing right. the constitution. You write that or let's, even let's have put an somebody page. Yeah, man. When you rappers out there, put together a rap song of what it is that we can do and what we can't do when we get pulled over. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that the officer is going to listen, but man, there's nothing more fearful than an educated black man. Nothing more fearful. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Always have your cameras on, people. Also, get yourself a car camera. Mm -hmm. Yo, get yourself a body cam. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds like paranoia, but brother and sisters, when I tell you, yo, document everything, man. As soon as that police officer turns you, um, um, comes and pulls you over, turn on your camera, it's let fine. him see it. He's going to be so offended. Mm -hmm. Yo, he's going to be so pissed when he sees the camera. Mm -hmm. Let him be pissed. Yeah. If you actually did do something wrong, take the ticket. Mm -hmm. You know, if your backlight is, is blown... And he, he was going to give you a warning, but you got the camera on, and now he's going to give you a ticket. Take the ticket. Yeah. And I see somebody say, get your speed, get a lawyer, get yourself a lawyer on speed dial. Yo, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. There My are Trinidad lawyers. Big. Yeah, man. There are lawyers that work these things. Everyone should, at, at very least, have an opening conversation with a lawyer. Look up a lawyer, have an opening conversation with a lawyer, have that lawyer's number handy, yeah. and just say, I cannot do anything until I speak to my lawyer. That is the answer for all things. Yeah. Also, let me tell you something also, because some of you are pussy. Let me tell you something. Okay. So, let me tell you something, dog. Some of you are really weak, 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 weak-ass motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of your time being um, taken. Yeah. Yo, that's why enough people give up so much. Because they just want to go home. I just want to go home. I just want to go home. No, nah, fuck that. Yeah. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. He's going to hold you there for four hours. That's Stay there for four hours. Stay that's fucking true. right there for four hours. Yeah. You know, I can't tell you the amount of times I've done jail for a night or for a weekend. Yeah. A lot. Okay. A lot. I remember my most memorable one is Fulton County in Brooklyn. Fulton County, downtown Brooklyn. I went in on... I went in on the 20, 21st of December. Okay. Bro, bro... Do you know when I got out? Please tell me. After Christmas? <laughs> after Christmas? Who opens up after Christmas? <laughs> after New Year's, man. Yeah. You had to wait until like January 5th or 6th. Yeah. Over a small weed charge. Yeah. A small ganja charge. Mm -hmm. I had to spend those nights and I had to hold it. And that was in the 90s. So anybody yeah. that knows Brooklyn in the 90s, you know Fulton County Jail was a fucking madhouse. Yeah. And I had to hold it. Mm -hmm. 
I had to be in that motherfucker for 10 days because some guy was just like, yo, I'm going to arrest you guys. And yo, let me tell you something, man. I, I think that a lot of us give up too much rights. Shout out to not just a lawyer. She could yeah. chime in. Yeah. You know, I think we give up too much rights for our comfort. We don't like being uncomfortable. Yeah. Hold that's, it. That's, that's a human. That's a human experience. Nobody wants to. Yeah, man. It's only Hold it. people. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. It's just a couple hours. It's just a night. It's just a few nights. Hold it. Call your lawyer. Get a lawyer. Somebody that you're not, not on retainer. Get a person that you can say, I can call this person and I can pay this person. Now, mind you, we all talking about people who have some resources. I want you guys to disseminate this information to the people that you don't have, that you know don't have resources and help them get the resources. Because we are talking about ghetto people. We are talking about the people who really have no actual way to pay for something like a lawyer or something like that, you know. There's a way for everybody to get representation. So pass this information down. Tell them, hold it. Hold it. That's that's a big one there too. Hold it. Hold it. Hold, Hold it. it. As soon as one of them says something to you, I have to talk to my lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hold this. Yeah. Now mind you now, the police officer him no vex, you know, him get four hours to sit on in I'm vehicle. Yeah. He's good. He's good with that. You're not good with that. You wanted to go home. You wanted to go do something. You got a family. You got things you need to do. Yeah. hold it call your lawyer speak to someone who can legally represent you before you say anything don't try and gauge the um what name again try to gauge the police officers uh you know how sometimes the police officer walk up and be like hey man um how, how's your day going yo don't get tricked don't get tricked. <laughs> Good cop, bad cop, boss. No Don't get way. tricked because it's still, he's going to walk right back over and be like, hey, you know, um, I think we want you to get out the car. And you'll be like, oh, he's talking all nice. Mm. Don't do it. Then he body, and then he body slams you. Mm -hmm. Please, everybody, use your sense. We are in a place where you do not have to talk. This is, this is America, I'm speaking. You don't have to say a word. Yeah. Use your, use some real representation. Shut your mouth. Let them know immediately, I am going to speak to my lawyer. Okay, 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 that's good. But do you know you were doing a 30, you were doing 55 and a 35? Speak to my lawyer, please. Because he's going to, yo, give me the ticket. Just give me the ticket. To I would rather you... Me. Yeah, man, I would rather you give me that ticket than me and you argue about something that you're not trying to hear. That's just going to escalate. Give me my ticket. And I'll handle this in another way. Yeah, yeah man, don't be afraid, people. Don't be afraid. You try to get out of everything so easy. But you know, like they say, man, you know, everything free and easy ain't always good for nothing. Ain't, ain't always good for you, man. But uh, you see, everybody wants to explain. You see, once you start trying to explain your way out of it, you're just digging yourself into a deeper Dig world. yourself in a bumble crap pit, man. Stop talking. Keep your quiet. You need, Call your lawyer. You need, talk about your business. Yeah, man. Yeah. Turn on, your, turn, on your, turn on your recorder. Record the conversation. And then when he gets to the window, say, okay, I hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, are you giving me a ticket? If you know, like, you know, like, just be like straight up. Are you giving me a ticket, man? You know? Well, no, I'm not going to give you a ticket yet. First, I need to. I need you to get out the car. I need to speak to my lawyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Record everything. Speak to your lawyer. Yeah. No matter how minuscule you think the situation is. Yeah. I've had that's police officers get you. follow it's me. It's a little thing that carries you into this something that lasts forever. The little thing yeah. that got you. Yeah. Yo, police don't like being recorded, brother. Yeah, no. They, yo, they hate you the moment they're recording no, you. Worse when you go live so people can see that they see that, yo, you see the comments and people yeah. are like, oh shit, I'm on the camera. They know already, yo, oh shit, what's the law? What's the law? What's the law? I need to act like I know the law because I can't just do any, I gotta record. Let them see you recording. Let them know that you are not alone. 
You have an yeah. army of people on your phone that are watching this right now. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he starts to ask you questions, I, I would like to speak to my lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Done. Yeah. So, yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Crazy Welsh. It's like we could have this conversation forever and who knows where it would end because yeah. I really don't know what's going on out there right now. What's the vibe like in Jamaica? Because I know you guys are close to the states a lot of stuff that's going on in the states you guys play yeah man attention. let me tell what's you something on, yo let me tell you something let me tell you something when we get for, for, for realized god man my sister and i talked yesterday you know what i got you know i really start to your yeah, shout out to all my uptown jamaicans yo i'm start to realize how fucked up some uptown jamaicans are <laughs> it's like it's like uptown jamaicans are like bona fide trump supporters type yeah. thing dog but i miss mm -hmm. enough of them start going with beer fuckery mm -hmm. i start type beer fuckery mind you now i don't really have any real like diehard uptown friends that like if I was if I had a flat on the road I wouldn't call any of them, but I know a lot of them. You know I I have many of them as associates. Enough of them, my blood clot show themselves no man. So I don't know man. Jamaica's still dealing with the COVID thing, still trying to work out um, uh, opening up the airport and um, allowing people tourists to come in and should they test tourists when they come in and that kind of something there. But okay. Yeah, I think I'm feeling it the most because, you know, yeah. Because you, you understand it's not something that you see on TV. It's something that you've actually been a part of. You know what I mean? You, I've been a part of a riot, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I've been a part of a riot. Fucked yeah. shit up. Yeah. So I understand. Yeah. I know what it is. No. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, it's always the way you think is always crazy. Let's not think there. Let's not leave this conversation on such a heavy note. Let's yeah, let's talk about quarantine new. class real quick, man. Yeah. Real quick, yeah, yeah everybody. Yo, know, big up to everybody, man. Thank you guys for the support. We really appreciate everybody that watched and um, bought a ticket to the to the quarantine class finale. I Again, bought one. I bought one. Oh, big respect to you, man. I think it was a great, yeah. great thing. We learned a lot. We learned a lot about bandwidth. Okay. We learned about bandwidth. At the beginning of the clash, it was, it was stopping, stopping a lot. So yeah. we ended up having to buy an extra five terabytes of bandwidth. Okay. Um, yeah, but again, shout out to Cheeky Dubs, big up to Mystical Youth, uh, big up to all the sounds that participated. Of course, you guys know Cheeky Dubs won, and yeah. yo, he deserved it, and big up yeah. to him, and what a great, great, great feeling it is to know that I was a part of the first ever pay-per-view while people are at home DJing Clash. It feels yeah. really amazing, you know? And now, it's, and now it's, you know, time to take a little break, reflect on some stuff. Mm -hmm. I think this Sunday, if we do do anything, this Sunday, I'll just have a conversation on the show. I won't be having any Clash. Um, you know, eventually we'll get back to the Clashing and stuff, but I just want everybody to really just focus on the moment a little bit more right now. Um, and uh, get we need to get some stuff resolved as a community. Yeah, definitely. And you get that. Even talking about Cheeky Dubs, I did a... I think I spoke yesterday. I did an interview with Cheeky. It's actually Mad. coming out today, 7 p.m. He talked about he talked about some of the toughest parts in the competition, how we got there. Are a lot mm -hmm. of stuff he talked about in this interview here. So you guys could check that out today Good at guy, 7 p.m. Man. on our Entertainment Report podcast YouTube page. It's there. As I said, Tricky is my I called him and say, yo, Tricky, you ready? He said, yo, say the word. I'm ready. Let's just jump on. And he was ready. Yeah, you man. I mean? Nice guy, just, man. Great guy. Yeah. yeah. No, just like, just like everybody else, just like big up. Alan Mystical, you big up Delhi Sultan, big up Bad Girl Marie, big up uh, T, mm -hmm. T Zion Ivory Crew, big up um, mm -hmm. Jamaiki, big up who else was there? Ah, oh, man, I don't want to forget anybody. Big up everybody because trust me, big up Warrior Song, big him up too. Big up everybody that was part of the quarantine clash because listen, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize that from you guys started till last weekend, that was 10 weeks of straight every Sunday. Every Sunday, clash, nine clash, weeks of clash, 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 nine clash. weeks of clash. Okay, nine and a half weeks of clash because the, and so, the and, bashment. And, 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 yeah, the bashment. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah nine. But you know, nine weeks of clash and a lot of a lot of big names and I feel really proud, man. I feel really proud. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of big things, big things forward in too, man. I haven't. I don't want to say nothing yet, but some big things are forward in. And you already know I'm gonna tell you first, but 
Yeah. Just look out for the announcement. Yeah. Specs, Specs, Jazzy T, Massive B. Um, yeah, Warrior was it? Yeah, big up everybody that actually participated participated in the clash. Poison Nerd, Heavy Hammer, everybody that was part of that series. Because listen, if you're the promoter, so you see it from your point of view. I'm a mm -hmm. spectator, so I see it from my point of view. Trust me, Wall Street, that was an amazing run. And I don't know what we would have done for those 10 weeks if there was nothing to do. Because if you even notice right now, Sundays are the new Saturday right now. Sunday is when mm -hmm. everything is going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I yeah, mean? And thanks to you, you really kicked off the Sunday and said, okay, I'm going to hold an early Sunday. You guys can do whatever you're doing from there. So Sunday yeah, is a new Saturday, right? And I'm again, thank you guys so much for actually putting that together. And I can't wait. And again, you need you need some time down. You guys take your time down, a week or two or whatever the case is. I would suggest, and I'm down for the same thing you said also, have a conversation. Cause you're good with the conversations. You yeah, man, I mean? we're going to have a nice conversation, man. We'll probably call up like Dynamic and Base Foundation Roots and yeah. Cheeky Dubs. And yes. yeah, man, we'll have a conversation, man. Yeah. 100% down for that one there. That, I would love to see that one there. You know what? We heard everybody play. We got a little glimpse into their mind. Now it's time to let's sit down and talk and even get into right. some serious issues like what's going on yeah, right man. now and all stuff there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Super crazy, super crazy. Mr. Jigs in the building. Big up yourself. I see you there. Pre, pre teens. I see you there too. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Big up everybody, man. Big up to yeah. all you guys. Ja Prince in the building. Everybody that's in the building, I just want everybody to stay safe. You know what I mean? Stay thinking. Keep your eyes on what's going on because everything that's said, you got to research. And then research, research. Like said, well, see, this isn't... There, there's something going on here. You know what I mean? I don't know yeah, what it is 100%, but I know so, it, something's going on. This doesn't make sense. Yeah, man. And I, I, you know, before we get out of here, I just want to say and reiterate to everybody, please, there's anything that you've know that you've taken from today's conversation. It is stop dissing people who are doing something, no matter how minuscule it is, mm -hmm. focus on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you don't think they're doing something right, but they're doing something, hit them up privately and say, yo, I got a plan. Yeah. Making posts, talking about everybody stupid because they posted a, a black square mm -hmm. um, or because they posted Black Lives Matter or whatever Ten you seconds. personally feel, Ten seconds. get it out of here. All right, and the last thing I want to say to everybody out there is remember, it's the internet. Say less. Love say you less. guys. Understand more. Well, she, it's been a slice like always. You know what? We're going to catch up next week, Monday, even though there's no clash. It's just part of the Monday tradition. See you guys in a bit because time's about to run out. Big up yourself and all that good stuff. All right. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.